you know, people are kind of funny. You know, they get funny ideas, get some funny thoughts, get some new ways of approaching the same old gospel. They like to come up with something new. You know, they like to think that, well, you know, it's just not good enough. You gotta do something new. You gotta try something different, you know? You gotta maybe, oh, I don't know, tone it down a little bit or make it a little more palatable. Make it easier to be understood. Make it simple. You know, where people can just come as they like and do what they want. Figure it out on their own. You know, maybe we, maybe we ought to try something different. Do something new. Maybe it's just too tough to be a Christian. Maybe, maybe we'll make our message a little simpler and more hip, more cool, you know, we'll, We'll bring in some nice music, you know, we'll get some song and dance going, you know. We can even, you know, add some rock and roll music or some rap, you know. We can even bebop, you know, and make it doo-wop. And we can hip-hop and we can, we can, you know, jump and down and get around and we can dye our hair. And we can look there and look this and do this and throw dust, gold dust in the air. We can roll around on the ground and we can bark like dogs. Well, you know. Funny thing is, you could. And, funny thing is, you'd probably get people to show up. But you know, the thing I found that is true about people is that when you get to know them, you find out whether or not they know God or they know about God. Is that usually it only takes me about five minutes in our conversation and I can hear people talk about everything else except Jesus himself personally. You know, I sit down with pastors all the time and, you know, they tell me about their ministry. They tell me about their past, their present, their future. You know, they tell me about, you know, what's going on in their church or how some service was or God forbid, you know, but I hate them. The one thing I hate about pastors, they'll tell me how many people got saved. As if they know, you know, <laughs> they're right. Or, you know, what what isn't happening in their church or their denomination or their building or their fund or whatever it may be. But they're always talking about everything else except Jesus. And, you know, maybe I'm old-fashioned. Maybe I'm different. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. But if you give me Jesus, you got my ear. If you give me Jesus and talk about him and your relationship with him, you have my full attention. You know, as a matter of fact, if you talk about Jesus, I'll probably talk to you a lot more about him than I will about any other subject. Although I can talk about every other subject. Didn't hear none of that. But you know, really not interested in anything else but Jesus. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. When they buried the blind preacher George Matheson, they lined his grave with red roses in memory of his love life of sacrifice. You see, George Matheson was a man of God that gave up a lot in order to follow God. Because there's a kind of a famous statement that says, deny yourself. I like to look around and kind of ask people, you know, well, when you look at a minister of God, when you look at a ministry, are they denying themselves? Or are they employing themselves? Have they become 
devoted to keeping their own ministry? Or are they giving it up for others? You know, I, I wonder sometimes because I know people like Tozer, you know, who lived in our generation, kind of shunned the popularity and was more famous after he died than he was while he was alive, that he didn't see fame and fortune as being all that beneficial, but nothing but a lure and a trap to fail the personal knowledge of Jesus himself. Because quite frankly, what you talk about is what you care about. And uh, I don't know what you do with your time, but I know that I spend a lot of time talking about Jesus. And you know, I even take the time sometimes for him to talk to me about me and about what I'm doing. Because I want to know if I'm pleasing to him. I really want to have, at the end of my life, the confident expectation that he said to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant, not because of the work I did, but because of the time I spent with him. Because I don't think that God is going to count on his fingers how many people you saved. I don't think God is going to look at you know, how perfect you were in the world or how many notches you have in your Bible belt or Bible cover. I don't think he's going to look at anything else except really what kind of relationship you had with him. And did you love him? Did you care? Did you spend time with the Father and the Son and the Spirit? And if you're doing anything else, if you're really all about ministry and not himself, I think you got your reward already. I don't think you're going to get much when the kingdom of God comes and Jesus stands before you and says, do I know you? If you've left your first love, it's pretty simple to fall in love. If you just look at him one more time, you think about what it was like the first time that you ever heard the name Jesus. The first time that you ever had God speak to you personally as though he were real and alive because he is, but remember that moment you were thrilled at hearing what God had to say? Huh. I don't know. You ever bought Jesus flowers? Did you ever do a one-on-one -on -one communion with Jesus? Just you and him where you take some Kool-Aid maybe and a little cracker and you say, Jesus, this is just you and me, man. We're just going to do this as though it were communion and we're just going to do this because you said, in as much as you do this, you do it unto me. You know, that this is what I, I want you to do to remember me by. You know, you proclaim my coming again and you're looking forward to it. When's the last time you did that with Jesus? Why not try now? He is coming again. You know that. And you know you're going to see him face to face. You know that. You know this is the last generation. You know that. But do you know him? Are you going to be surprised at his coming again? At who he is? How he looks? What he's like? What his voice sounds like? Or are you going to be completely surprised that you don't know Jesus at all? After all. After all these things that you've done in his name. It's really up to you and I of what we do with our time. I hope and I pray. And I'm sincere about that. That we get to know Jesus in a more personal way than we've ever known before. Because I would never want him to say to you. As he could. And who knows. Depart from me, I never knew you. God forbid that that ever be said of a Christian. 
And so by His mercy and grace, I pray for you today that the Lord would bless you, not with spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, and not with some prosperity or some deliverance, but I pray today that God would just reveal Himself to you in a personal way, an intimate way with Jesus so you know Him today, in a way that maybe you hadn't thought of before, you didn't know before. <laughs> Uh, but right now, you know, he's with you, and he loves you, and you just can't help but grin about it. 